Here we go. Yep. No. No. No penalty. Oh, my goodness. That is a shocker. Welcome to another edition of Instant Replay presented by Cheez-Its. And you know who I'm with. The Hall of Famer fill-in, Kalen Carr. Two words. Kalen. Let's go. <laughs> we start in Seattle where the Sounders are taking on Western Conference foe Colorado Rapids. And Kellen Rowe plays a ball into Will Bruin. There's a foul. Lalas Abubakar brings Will Bruin down. Referee blows the whistle. And, uh-oh, Nico Ladero. Quick, intelligent, plays this long ball off the quick restart. And then next thing you know, Jordan Morse slides it in. Chip. Goal. 1-1. One, one. But Colorado Rapids are not happy with this. They're saying that the ball was rolling, that this shouldn't have counted. Kalen, what do you think? All right, so let's start at the beginning here, Chuck. I have to say, although Will Bruin is a former teammate, I don't see a lot in the tackle from Abubakar, but that's not reviewable in this case. What happens then is Diego Rubio actually kicks the ball back a little bit, which goes to a whole other point around time-wasting uh, and delaying a restart here, but that wasn't caution. Smart play, though, from Nico Ladero to take the ball further back anyways and play the quick restart to the advancing... Uh, Seattle attack that Morris finishes off. I think here this is more a case where Colorado switches off. They get too focused on the referee and are not ready for the quick restart. You nailed it, Kalen. You always have to stay switched on, especially against the Sounders on the road. When there's a foul, you drop, get in front of the ball, and that didn't happen in this case, and they were punished. And to the next play in this match, and we just talked about the restart, delaying a restart, wasting time. Well, Kellen Rowe was awarded a second yellow card for this play here. Kalen, tell me what you think about this one. Uh, this one hurts because it's not the smartest play here from Rowe. They're level in the match, plenty of time to play. You're on a yellow. You can't make this move because there's been an added emphasis this season on delaying a restart. That said, this feels incredibly harsh to me. To see he just tosses it just over the sideline. It's not delaying the game by any major amount. You gotta have maybe a bit of a feel here if you're the referee. Go over to Rowe, give him a stern warning, remind him potentially that he's on a yellow, which he should already know, yes. But come on, it disrupts the flow of the game. I think this is one he could have let go. I, I second you, Kalen. This is the start of the second half. The Seattle Sounders are playing at home. It's 1-1. They're going for the win. Th this is not a team that is okay with a point at home. They have an, a tempo. They have an urgency to get three points. At this stage of the match, I would like to see a referee walk over and say, your last warning. I don't want to give you another one for time wasting. And I think that's how it should have unfolded. And then we fast forward to the 69th minute where the Seattle Sounders are on an absolute jailbreak. The transition game, and they're flying. Jordan Morris, who else, earns a PK for the Sounders. Kalen, thoughts? I mean, Morris was behind the back line all day, uh, stretching the field. If there's a rebound, you're going to bet that he's going to be quickest to it. Clearly beats him to the ball. Yarbrough gets him on the feet. No complaints. Easy call. Now we head over to Orlando, where Orlando City are taking on the Philadelphia Union. It's the 39th minute, and there's a corner kick, and Jacob Glessness with the flick to Gazdag, who taps it in, goal! Or so he thought, the flag is up. VAR check, offside, overturn. The goal stands, Daniel Gazdag gets the goal. This one was a tight one. Kalen, what are your thoughts? I think the VAR, Jair Marufo, does a good job here, because as you look closely, who on is standing level with Gazdag, who's just behind him. Juan turns off a little bit, begins to step forward just as Glessness makes contact with the ball. Gazdag does a good job of staying alert, gets a toe in, finishes the goal. Good call. Now we fast forward in the match. We're in the 94th minute, and this is where things get interesting. There's a corner kick, and there's a battle between Daniel Gazdag and Antonio Carlos. Now nothing's called on the field, Antonio Carlos has his hands in the air, but eventually Alex Chilowitz is again signaled to the monitor from VAR official Jair Marufo. Orlando fans, Orlando players, they think it's a slam dunk, oh we got this, this is going to be a penalty, easily. He comes back and not only does he not give a penalty, he says it's a foul on Antonio Carlos going the other way. Kalen, this one's a complicated call, what do you say? 
This is a tough one because when I first saw this, I was screaming to be, this has to be a pen. You can see Gazdag has control of Car Antonio Carlos throughout much of the play. And by control, I mean half of his shirt in his hands. But as you look a little bit closer, I saw that this was actually more of a hand-to-hand -hand situation where Antonio Carlos has Gazdag's shirt as well and actually looks to pull Gazdag closer to him, which generally you would think would be pushing away to try and create space. That changed things for me. What about you? Kalen, that is that subtle movement that goes unnoticed. Antonio Carlos does in fact grab a handful of jersey of Daniel Gazdag and pulls him onto himself to get the call. So I think in the end, this is a job well done from the officiating crew. It's a very tough play. You have to take every pull into account. Yes, they were both jostling, but in the end, I think they got this one right. Now we take our talents to Toronto, where TFC are taking on Charlotte. And this is no questions asked here as the dog so play on Christian Fuchs as he pulls down the Toronto attacker. And yes, the red card comes out automatically, but that's not the play in question. The play in question happens before the ball is played into space. It's here where Daniil Henry makes his tackle and what appears to be a little controversial. Kalen, did you see a penalty here? I do, Chuck. I think he misses the ball with his initial tackle. The foot goes over the ball here. Yes, there is contact with his trailing leg with the ball, but for me, there's enough to say that he didn't get the ball on the first play and makes contact with the attacker to say that this could have been brought back and been a penalty for Charlotte. Mm -mm -mm. TFC fans, I feel like you're gonna be tweeting that Kalen Carr after that one. But what I will say is it's not clear and obvious. Did Daniil Henry get a little touch of the ball? Did that trail leg actually in fact win the ball? We don't know, it's not clear and obvious for me. So I think they got this call right in the end. All right, Chuck, I hear you. Maybe not completely clear and obvious, but the result was anyways in this game. We head to Yankee Stadium, where New York City FC are taking on Inter Miami. Alejandro Pozuelo is trying to make a little move in his own half, and is that a foul? It leads to a Maxi Morales goal. Kalen Carr, what say you? I don't see anything here, honestly, uh, for Pozuelo to complain about. And then the second question here is Maxi Morales offside. And I think the timing is just right here. Nobody wants to pull out those uh, crazy lines. That's close enough for me. Looks level. I think it's a good goal. Ah, see for me, this is a foul. Now it's a very slight foul, but a foul is a foul. You could see Santi Rodriguez take two hands and pull Alejandro Pozuelo. Now it wasn't the most egregious pull, but it is a pull, which prevented him from taking that ball and making a pass. For me, I think this is a foul. Chuck, he dishes it out first and then gets a little bit back and just stops. I think it's gotta be more in there for, for a goal to be reversed. All right, let's move on to the next play in this match. It's the 32nd minute. Tati Castellanos thinks he has an easy tap in for Malde Amundsen. He slides it in, Tati scores! Hold up, flags up, offside. Kalen, do you agree with this call? Oh, it's close, and who wants to take away one from Tati during his last match, potentially last match with NYCFC, uh, but I think he's going to have to settle with the nice send-off three points and not have a goal on this one, because this one looks just offside to me. I'm with you. I think he's slightly offside. It's very, very close. He's just a half foot offside. We head to Cincinnati, where FC Cincinnati have a free kick and they're down 1-0 in the 51st minute. This is a great opportunity to get back in the game. They hit the free kick and, oh, Brenner tries to head it and it looks like it may have come off of Dax's hand. Is there an argument for a handball, Kayla? This one I've watched a number of times here. And as I go slower and slower, I do see Dax's arm come out to the left-hand side pretty high there. Yes, he is trying to change his direction to defend the cross, but I do think that hand comes up in an unnatural position. It's hard to say if there's contact. It does look like it makes contact, so I could see this one having gone to video review, being awarded a pen, but it's tough to get a clear look from what I can see. Well, if you see something, say something. 
That's it for this edition of Instant Replay presented by Cheez-Its. I'm your boy, Charlie Davies, and I'm happy to be joined by the Hall of Fame villain, Kalen Carr. See you next time.